Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see everyone in person. I am Brittany Storm. I am the uh, Sustainability Manager at McKay Corporation. Uh, prior to getting into uh, the manufacturing side, I was a sustainability consultant uh, for many of years, so I am very familiar with uh, LEAD. I speak sustainability very well and happy to uh, bring it to the manufacturing side and uh, share a little bit today about uh, the technical side of sustainability and how you can go about uh, selecting products for your sustainable building project. Uh, in, in traditional construction, the choice of products requires consideration of aesthetics, performance, cost, and in sustainability, uh, these considerations are expanded to uh, include uh, ma making sure that occupant health and environment uh, impacts are reduced. Uh, so project teams are increasingly looking at these sustainability considerations. And as the number of uh, green building products, green building certifications increase, so do the number of green product certifications. There are hundreds of green building certifications out there. Uh, they establish environmental and health performance criteria for buildings, each with varying approaches. Some focus on human health and wellness. A uh, few focus on energy efficiency and resiliency. Others focus on the environment. Uh, but most cover all of these in one way, shape, or form. In order to achieve green building certifications, you need green product certifications and other sustainable attributes. The sustainability certifications of a product vary as well. Uh, it depends on what green building certification your project is pursuing. Some of these focus on the health and wellness, uh, some focus on uh, environmental, and some are multi-attribute, which means they cover multiple certifications or requirements. And there are some that focus on single attribute uh, with a specific parameter such as recycled content or circularity or VOC emissions. Some require third party testing and or certification while others do not. So as a result, as you can see, there are an overwhelming number of green product certifications and attributes. The sustainable certifications and attributes of a product can vary significantly depending on the product type. Uh, for example, the sustainable attributes of concrete mix are different than the sustainable attributes of wood doors, and they're different than the sustainable attributes of tile and tile setting materials. Uh, it's not rocket science, or most don't think it would be rocket science. Uh, however, these Variabilities do require a deeper understanding of green product certifications or attributes that are required for your product type, uh, as well as the third party standards and certifications for both green buildings and green products. These are 10 of the green product attributes that are specific to the tile industry. Uh, some are specific to tile, some are specific to tile setting materials, a few cover uh, both. And we'll talk about those a little bit more uh, in the next couple of slides here. Uh, these five sustainable attributes or certifications are related to a product's environmental impacts. Uh, the construction industry has a significant impact on the environment. Embodied carbon is a newer sustainability buzzword and uh, refers to greenhouse gas emissions arising from extraction, manufacturing, and installation process. And the goal here is to reduce the amount of greenhouse gas emissions caused by the manufacturing process. The attributes require a life cycle assessment of a product to determine its uh, impacts. A life cycle assessment, or an LCA, uh, assesses a product's life stages from extraction to end of use. Uh, the data identifies areas of environmental impacts, uh, including greenhouse gas emissions, ozone depletion, and many more areas. And all of that information is assembled into what's called an environmental product declaration, or an EPD. There are several types of EPDs. Uh, 
two that I'll talk about today are the generic or the industry-wide EP, EPD. Uh, Tile Council of North America has uh, three industry-wide EPDs, uh, one for ceramic tile, one for um, cement mortars for tile installation, and another for cement grouts for tile installation. Another type of EPD is a product-specific EPD. It's a report that covers products or a product, a single product from a single manufacturer. Using products with recycled content results in lower environmental impacts when you're using less raw materials. Uh, the pre-consumer recycled content refers to a material that is removed during the manufacturing process and reuse for an alternative purpose uh, before consumer use. So an example of this would be a, a tile manufacturer that purchases rejected porcelain uh, tile or re rejected porcelain from a plumbing manufacturer and incorporates that uh, into their manufacturing process to uh, create tile. That would be an example of pre-consumer, so it didn't touch the consumer's use part of it yet. Post-consumer is a reclaimed product that's already been used by consumers and would have been discarded if it was not recycled. Uh, an example of this would be, so for every 100,000 100, square feet of Maphisonic RM underlayment uh, that's installed, it's approximately 1,400 tile, uh, tires that are diverted from a landfill. And extended producer responsibility is a strategy that shifts the responsibility of post-consumer management of waste back to the manufacturer instead of having a waste hauler deal with um, diverting from the landfill. And so tile that's considered damaged, scrap, or waste after consumer use is returned to participating manufacturers for recycling and reuse. These five attributes or certifications are related to a product's uh, human health and wellness impacts. Given that people spend over 90% of their time indoors, hazardous chemicals are a growing concern. In a perfect world, uh, products would be free of harmful chemicals. Uh, this growing list represents the worst in class chemicals uh, found in building products uh, that should be avoided. Several chemical avoidance lists, such as Living Building Challenges Red List, uh, have been developed to address this growing concern. And manufacturers can screen for products for chemicals and provide documentation confirming whether or not the product has hazardous chemicals or not. And this is an example of a material ingredient report. And this is a document that discloses what is in a product. Uh, it shares the cast number, the ingredient, uh, its role, and its hazard category uh, as a chemical. You may have heard of health product declarations, which is at the, up in the top row there. Um, material ingredient reports are more than just health product declarations or HPDs. There are declare labels, manufacturer inventories, cradle to cradle certification. There's so many ways to disclose what's in a product um, beyond health product declarations. And then uh, ceramic tile and porcelain tile are considered products that are inherently not emitting VOCs, which means that they don't off-gas or emit harmful chemicals. Uh, however, for tile setting materials, uh, it's important for products to be selected that have low VOCs and low VOC content and emissions. Many finishes must be installed using adhesives and sealants or floor coatings that emit VOCs during and after installation. Uh, project teams should select tile setting materials that have been tested and comply with California Department of Health, uh, CDPH standard method 1.2-2017 for right now for VOC emissions. There are several third-party testing uh, certifications for VOC emissions. There's UL Green Guard Gold, SCS Indoor Advantage Gold, uh, CRI Green Label Plus. And VOC content, uh, tile setting materials should comply with South Coast Air Quality Management District Rule 1168 for adhesives and sealants. And there's also Rule 1113 for floor coatings, 
other other types of flooring or other types of um, materials besides the uh, adhesives and sealants. And lastly, the um, Green Squared certification, TCNA or Tile Council of North America has a product certification called Green Squared. It's a certification exclusively for tile and tile setting materials. It's a multi-attribute certification that covers everything from extraction to end-of-life use and incorporates all of the uh, environmental and health impacts or attributes and certifications that I talked about today. It does require uh, third-party auditing of manufacturing plants, uh, plant operations, material ingredients, EPDs. It covers everything that all of these other attributes or certifications cover. So how do you pick a healthy and sustainable material? Uh, there are so many disclosures out there. There's so many certifications, so many standards. You don't know where to start. Um, it's kind of like, where's Waldo? Um, sustainability also means different things to different people. We find sometimes someone asks for uh, certifications specific to health. Some ask for specific to environmental. And, so the more that you can provide, uh, the merrier the project team. So first, uh, remember some buzzwords that we discussed today. These are specific to the tile industry. If your project is pursuing a green uh, building certification, chances are you're going to be asked to provide one or more of these product certifications or attributes. Uh, so. I always start with the spec section. Uh, identify what green building certification is being pursued, uh, after which educate yourselves on uh, you know, what's being asked of you, what are the goals of the project, uh, and then find out products that meet those requirements. Review the specifications. Hopefully, there's spec sections included for sustainability. 018113 uh, is the sustainability design uh, requirements that will notify you what green building certification you're pursuing. And then hopefully your uh, oops, spec section will also detail um, the green product certifications that the project team is looking for. So depending on the project specifications and or the green building program that the project is pursuing, uh, you may be asked to provide several certifications or attributes for a single product. Uh, depending on the green building standard you're pursuing, you might be able to, you might have to pursue more than others. Uh, the well building standard, for instance, focuses on uh, certifications or attributes that are specific to health. Uh, LEED would require both, but there are some other certifications out there that are specific to just the environmental impacts. Uh, so in this particular example, the spec section, which I know no one can read, uh, is asking for several certifications uh, or attributes, asking for recycled content, EPDs, uh, compliant VOC content. And so it's up to the project team to then pull all of this information for every single product. A wealth of sustainable information is available and continues to be developed pertaining to green products. Uh, so check your manufacturer's websites uh, for sustainable attributes and certifications. There's a wealth of information out there. Uh, but ask your reps, too. Uh, chances are they know where, where to go or what to ask uh, as far as providing the documentation that you need. There are also free online product databases such as Mindful Materials or Ecomedes or... Uh, UL spot and essentially it's a library for products you can go on the on the website select what green building certification you're pursuing select what certification type you're looking for and essentially it will filter out based on the manufacturers that can contribute to that and also third-party uh, certifications such as SCS indoor advantage gold CRI green label plus uh, all of these different sites that certify your products also have a database, so you can narrow down even more so on there. And uh, as new and more stringent requirements continue to be introduced in sustainable construction, you can expect to see continued progress in advancing sustainable products, as well as ways to find them. So happy to answer any questions on where to search, and uh, thank you for your time.